All right, so our volumes of revolution. Okay, they're something a little bit different. And what they are is our volumes are created by rotating an area about an axis. So I guess if we if we think about this area here in our circle, if we rotate that about the x-axis, well, this is going to generate a sphere. Okay, a sphere of radius. What's it going to be? The radius will be two units, won't it? And you can sort of see here, that's what we're saying here. Each point, each little slice is rotated about the axes. Um, and each slice, I guess, we think about as the change in the x value. Okay, and, and our, okay, and then we move, we keep moving forward to our, our y equals a half x. If we rotate this triangle about the axes, x axis, again, we're going to create a cone. All right, so. From our knowledge of our, our math methods, we can sort of infer that each of the slices, if you like, that rotate around the area form circles, of which the area is pi r squared, which is really pi y squared, because the y value in each case is going to give you the radius, right? If I grab a slice down there, the radius is just the y value. And it's the sum of all of those slices that we're adding up. And the sum of all the slices between two values of all the radiuses as we move along the x values, the x axis, is given by pi y squared dx. And that's our formula. So if we rotate about the x axis, my volume pi r squared as x changes. All right? So it's pi y squared dx in the same thing. If we rotate about the y-axis, um, it's pi, y, pi x squared dy. So I guess the key thing to note is if we rotate about the y-axis, it's with respect to y. If we rotate about the x-axis, we integrate with respect to x. Okay, so let's consider the volume of the solid of revolution that we create when we rotate f of x equal to x cubed about the x-axis, all right? So we're looking at between zero and the one, so we'll just sketch that section. So between zero and one, and we're gonna rotate this area here about the x-axis. So the equivalent volume or shape that we're gonna create is something a bit like that. I don't know, with a bit of a tabletop on its side or on its top or a spinning top or something like that. So we know that the volume is equal to pi times um, about the x-axis, so it's dx, so it's pi y squared dx, all right? dx, so the terminals are all in terms of x. So we get pi times the integral between 0 and 1 of y squared, which is x to the 6 which is x to the 7 on 7 evaluated between 1 and 0, with pi at the front, which is just pi on 7 units cubed. Okay? If we're going to do a similar thing, we want to rotate around the y-axis, the area bound between 0 and 1. So about the y-axis, so really what we're saying is if... Um, y is equal to x cubed, x is equal to y to the power of a third. And that x is equal to y to the power of a third, sorry boys, is really just the same graph, except this time, it's this area. So we're gonna get a, I don't know, a solid cup or something like that. So we end up with that volume when we do our final rotation. So about the y-axis, Volume is equal to pi times about the y dy, so it's x squared. We already worked out x to the one third, y to the one third is what x is equal to. So we get volume is equal to pi outside the front of the y value, 0 to 1, y to the one third squared dy. So it's equal to pi outside of, uh, so y to the two thirds. Antiderivative, add one to the power, so it's five on three, so it's three y to the five on three on five between one and zero. 
so it's 3 pi on 5. Moving right along, y equals 2 sine inverse of x. So our graph is there, but I know it's between 0 and 1, so I'm just going to do from that section onwards. The curve is rotated around the y-axis to form a solid of revolution. So again, the solid that we're forming is that one there. Uh, that point there is the point. Well, if that's 1, sine inverse of 1 is pi on 2. 2 times pi on 2 is pi. So that's the point 1 pi again. If y is equal to 2 sine inverse of x, uh, sine inverse of x is equal to y on 2, x is equal to sine y on 2. So I get integral pi y values 0 to pi of x squared, which is sine squared y on 2 dy. So from there, double angle formula sine squared x is a half, 1 minus cos 2x, so 2 times 1 on 2 is just y, dy. So let's bring the half out the front, get pi on 2 evaluated between y. Any derivative of cos is positive sine, so it's minus sine y between pi and 0, pi on 2 outside of, pi minus sine of 0, which is 0, sorry, pi minus sine of pi, sine of pi is 0, um, minus 0 minus 0, so we get pi squared on 2 units, right?